friends. Welcome to my safe little corner of the internet. Um, today I just want to chill a little bit. It's a nice time. It's just I've gotten back very recently from a trip from Germany, actually, and uh, I just, you know, it's it's a really lovely trip. But it's very exhausting, of course, having to travel and everything. And it's just I feel like it might be a good idea to. You know, just share and document about my experience going there for almost a week. Oh, I went like five days, but it was like, let's just say a week, okay, for the sake of um, a more cohesive title. Um, so yeah, we'll just be here for a, a few minutes, you know, just talking a bit about my trip to Germany and just showing off some of the cool things that I got while I was over there. And actually, one of them is Chesterfield, which uh, if you don't know, we don't have this in Thailand, which is kind of crazy uh, because it, it, you know, I heard so much about how this is like the best cigarette in the whole world and everything, and it's just like you you wouldn't know until you try it. So of course I had to bring this back home to where I am, but we're going to try it right now, right here, right now. And don't worry, I got the orange as well, which I will try at the end of this video. But we'll begin everything with some nice little coffee and some cheese to fill. I already worked my way through quite a bit of this because it's like really, really good. It's one of the best, definitely, that I've tried in my life. I haven't tried too much, but I just know that like not a lot could beat just the quality of this. Like you could, you could like just taste that, just the, the quality that this has and it's just, yeah, here we go. match that with some coffee like mm. yeah recently I've gotten into coffee actually uh, before I wasn't like a big coffee girl I, I'm more of like a tea girl and I would still say that but recently I I don't know what happened I just like acquire a taste for black coffee which is just kind of amazing but that's why I decided to you know just kind of come out and film this and drink some black coffee it's it, it sounds it's just it sounds like a perfect combination. I went to like multiple places before in my life and just like traveling and everything, but I think those were like part of like groups and stuff like that, right? But this time I went and like just on my own and it was, it was very scary. <laughs> it was very, very scary because you know, it's like my first time ever like traveling like by myself. And instantly, the first thing that I did when I got there was getting a pack of Chesterfield and it just felt like okay now I'm in Europe right it feels like now I'm in Europe I think like that's always a very good thing to do whenever like you go to anywhere like to other countries it's just like make yourself stable stabilize yourself with something that feels very local and feels very um, indicative of the place that you are now currently traveling in and so I had my Chesterfield and I ride on my on like the taxi and instantly the first thing that I saw was the graffiti and everything on the highway and like that instantly made me like fall in love with it right because like i don't like cities that are, that are like too pristine and too clean and i also don't like cities that are like too dirty or whatever but this one it feels very artsy right it feels artsy and it feels like oh my god like this is like my place so berlin berlin was where where i headed so i spent the majority of the first day just kind of walking around just looking at things and just like smoke in my pack and also one thing that I love about it was just like looking at all the people on the streets just smoking it was it was very comforting because like I think in other countries and especially in Thailand it's like more of a taboo thing not so much taboo it's just like it's more frowned upon right so like you wouldn't see people smoke in public which is you know and understandable because it's not always that cool to smoke in public and I think over there it is excusable just because it's very cold and the wind is like so strong that it does push you know the smoke away so I don't know I think you might have to look into that in terms of like the dangers of if you know obviously if it's like smoke everywhere everything that's bad but if it's like heavy wind like does it still affect a lot I don't know you gotta like you gotta like look into that and you know if you know anything about that definitely put it in the comments below Whew, already I'm feeling that buzz That's a nice fucking buzz. But 
I spent the majority of the first day just looking around, just looking at things, and just like, I, I'm not gonna get too deep into how I ended up there, just cause it's very private, or like, why in general, but all I'm going to just say is that like, I had good company, okay? I had very good company, and they were able to spend time with me there the entire five days, and it was, it was very sweet, and I think that like, it, um, just for anybody that's like traveling to Germany, it's definitely very necessary to know the language because it's just it just makes things a less I don't know, just just less hostile a little bit. Not to say that Berlin is like very hostile. In fact, like, I would say it's like definitely my favorite place that I've ever been to so far in my life. And but if I would have known a bit of German, it would have definitely made it even better than it already is. So one of the first things that I just like really want to talk about while I was over there is two things. It has two of my favorite things in the whole world, which is movies, a lot of like movie culture and everything. And just, it's very queer. It's a very queer city. And I think like you could even feel it in the air in the sense of just like, nobody gives a shit. Like they don't give a shit in the sense of like they're gonna hurt you, but they don't give a shit in the sense of like, you could be whoever the fuck you want. We don't care. Just walk, just move, just, you know, don't mess around and it's fine. Like you could look at the shops and there's like stickers and of like the pride flag, but it's specifically even ones with like, uh, included in it with like the trans flag and that like really made me so aesthetic and like really happy and just like and, and I put like a photo uh, of the trans flag that I saw at the back of like you know I don't know what you call that like sorry if like my English is a bit broken but I don't know how you, what you call that but they have that they have the trans flag like sprayed on there it's just such a cool city because like there's graffiti everywhere but it's not how do you call it it's phallic for sure but it doesn't feel how you call it, it doesn't feel like vanity, it feels like somebody who truly wanted to paint a dick, you know, and they did it, and it just feels very exciting to be around. But while I was over there, I went to a cinema, actually, I went to this cinema, The Yorker, and I saw three movies. I saw The Substance again, which I saw, which I already watched when I was in Thailand. Substance, you know, just the, the, the current topic conversation right now, of course, I really enjoy it. I know some of my friends don't, but like I really, really find it to be, I don't know, just like, just ah, so intense, right? It's so intense and sometimes like, yeah, it's not subtle, but I think sometimes it's just nice to have a film where it's like, it's not trying to obscure what it is trying to be. It, it is telling you exactly what it is and playing around in that field and just being completely explosive with that. And I just, I find it really, really just enjoyable and, and cathartic just going there in the cinema. And like, and the funny thing is it was like a date. It was like the person I, that I was with, they were like, hey, you want to go see The Substance? And I was like, whoa, okay, sure. And then we went and watched it and it was just, I was very impressed with the fact that they asked me to go see The Substance specifically. That was really fun. But then the, the next day after that, I went to um, a bar actually. Didn't go super well, it was like more of like a drunken experience. It was just like, yeah, I didn't quite know German, so I just kind of sat there for 20 minutes and just drinking my alcohol and just like being a bit more and more drunk and just nobody's talking to me, even though I'm sure they think I look pretty cool. Like, I'm gonna show you some of the, the outfit I wore that day. Like, I look fucking aesthetic as shit. Oh, but yeah, I went, I drank. Nobody talked, which is understandable, you know, because of like the language barrier. Or, like I know that like they probably know English, but just like I don't know, it's more cool if I would have know how to speak to them, you know. Which is again something that like if you are going to go to Germany, fucking know the language for sure. Like I'm trying to learn German right now because like after I have gone there, I kind of want to go back. And I don't know if like things change around my life, I would love to like you know live there. It just looks like a really nice slice corner of the world that still has the things I need in my life, you know. And like, and the things I need are some good cigarettes, some good coffee, a good, you know, some great gay bars and the art house movie theaters. And speaking of which, after I got super fucking drunk, I went and I saw Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, which actually it's very funny because this entire trip is very Tim Burton theme, which is very funny. <laughs> 
So I, first of all, I began with Beer Juice, Beer Juice. I went and saw that, completely drunk off my head. And if you know how crazy that movie is, like I was hysterical in that theater and just like watching and just going like, whoa, you know, oh, like Michael Keaton absolutely still embodying the character as if like time has never changed, even though he looks very drastic, I would say. And just the craziness of like the movie, like, it's, I don't think it's like, it's not good but it's like decent and it's wild and it's exciting because this is a movie where Burton is basically almost reminiscing about the fact that you know we used to be able to make movies like this crazy back in the old days but now not quite although me saying that it's quite funny how 2024 is the year where a lot of directors with name with like prestige or like with power and credit who have made successful in the past, who have like made successful films in the past, are currently making some of the most crazy, bad shit, like expensive movies that are just completely like nobody is going to pay. Like no, it's not gonna make back its money, and not a lot of people are gonna watch it except people, crazy people like me. But I fucking appreciate the fact that like they're making it. Although good for Burton that like he did make his money back from what I remember because it's it's beer juice, beer juice. It's got you know, um, Jenna Ortega and everything. And speaking of her, I got two shoes while I was over there. I got um, one where it was, you know, just a Sarah shoes. It was like the shoes that I went to Germany with. It fucking broke on me. It broke on me while I was, you know, just right fresh off of the plane. It was already like gone. It, it, it was gone. It was already like off the handle and everything and I had to buy a new shoe. So I bought these like Sarah ones which were high heels and I wore that for two days and I started to bleed. Like my feet were bleeding and I couldn't stand it anymore. So I bought another one and this one turns out to be very similar to the one that broke but it was it's kind of much better quality I would say. I don't know but it's Wednesday's theme. Um, it's like it's supposed to be like a promotion with Wednesday with you know the show. And I love that shoes, and actually it got me kind of interested in watching Wednesday again, even though like, I wasn't too big on it the first time. Watch a couple more episodes after that. It was like, okay, it's actually way better than I remember, but I don't feel the need to keep watching it, so I, I stopped. But then, after that, after this entire tangent, I went to the Tim Burton exhibition. Here, I'll show you a picture of the Tim Burton exhibition. I went through the VIP um, tickets. I went through that one where it's like you could go through it twice, right? And get some gifts, you know, a little knickknacks. But I went through this twice and just, you know, saw the statues and everything. It was just like, it was very nice. It was very nice. It was very comforting. Some of the statues are less impressive than others, but the more impressive, like, lifelike ones are really, really cool. And it just reminds me that, yes, I need to watch Sweeney Todd, which I have. I have watched Sweeney Todd finally with my friend, my bestie, with the same name as me, Iconic. Uh, I have to watch, of course, Edward Hands and just, yeah, although it's very sad, like, there's no Pee Wee. I should watch Pee Wee, but I... But, they don't have Pee Wee Herman there, and they don't have Ed Wood, which is sad because he's, he's a fucking trans icon, but no Ed Wood, you know, no Pee Wee, super unfortunate, no Sally, even though they sell her figurines, you know, at the shop, but no Sally, only Jack Skeleton, which is like, okay, whatever. Um, but yeah, this actually got me like really interested in watching more Tim Burton stuff, and so after that, I went and watch Wednesday as I said and just like yeah and I'll show you the little knickknacks that I got uh, from the gift section so I got this little postcard they were like selling shirts but like the shirts were like these exact images and like I wasn't too too big on it like I would have loved to be able to wear like a Burton shirt for this video it, it would have been like super appropriate but you know I don't have I don't have that much budget girls I fucking traveled to Germany and back okay like, I, I, I paid quite a bit to be able to tell you all of this so I'm just going to show you some of these images and just yeah meanwhile wearing my Sofia Coppola fed. but so after that I went to the Berlin Film Museum which is just it's just for me it's completely like my thing you know even like the person I was with was like yeah you you go off there I will stay and do whatever the hell I want so I'm like okay sure I'm gonna go to the film Berlin because like, it's mostly just like my thing you know just like being able to go past through like you know Merlin Dietrich like 
costumes and everything, and everything she's wore on screen, and just like feeling that aura. I love how like 30, like 35 percent of that museum was basically dedicated to her, which is just like so iconic and just like mm, beautiful. So the first leg of it was like silent film. So there's Metropolis, there's The Last Laugh. Like they have the costume that like the character in The Last Laugh wore, which if you've seen that movie, which is very devastating, you would know how important that costume is to the character and to his arc and his progression, just how tragic that movie was. So being able to see it in real life and seeing how actually like really big the actor must have been, my God, like it was, you know, chill. I got chills and then there's, you know, the Dr. Cabinet of Calgary, which is another one that like, I felt like I wanted to watch after I go to like this museum. And that's kind of a, the, the beautiful thing about like film museums and like exhibitions like this, right? Where it's like, when you get to see just like the detail of like the little details, but up close and just like in this, I don't know how you call it, but just like, you know, almost interactive way because you have to go and look at it and just, you know, look at all the details that like a camera wouldn't be able to catch. It just makes you feel more immersed into that world and more intrigued to go back and look at whatever, you know, you might have missed when you first experienced it. And, and yeah, it just, it, it's almost like very life changing in a way because I got like, it's just incredible. So I went through that. So the first, I think like about 60, 70% of it was very dedicated to like, golden age like older movies and like there was actually a part um in the exhibition that was like very very heartbreaking and, and one of the, it's one of the things that i like about berlin which is that like they are not ashamed to admit about what happened in the past you know especially during world war ii which is something that i couldn't say so much about my own country but i love the fact that like they acknowledged it and i went to the memorial um which is very moving and just yeah being there and you feel just the lost but also just you know just looking at the dedication that people have made especially for you know there's like a, one stone where it was you could look through it and you could see like this cute gay couple and it just makes you realize that like we cannot ever forget about this and the people who tries to bury it are monsters you know they're, they're terrible you shouldn't bury these things these things should be always be remembered not just because so history wouldn't repeat itself but because these people are worth remembering. These people are worth, you know, we cannot forget about them. And the reason why they have been like this, why why these things happened to them was exactly because the people back then didn't think about them and forgot about them. So I think it was just very important that that exists. But in the museum itself, there was a dedication. There was like a room, um, not so much dedicated, but, but containing archives of when you know, German cinema was, you know, run by the, you know, the regime, by the, by the Nazis. And the way they did it was very clever because they don't proudly like display it. No, they have like a wall that looks like an archive or like cabinet and you have to pull it. And when you pull it, it will show you items in the films and as well as the history, information. And then below that, there would be a screen where you could watch the actual movies that they made during that time. And there's something very chilling about that because it's like yeah you're unlocking history quite literally and it's it's very powerful and just yeah bone chilling yeah absolutely and then also i was a bit disappointed that like first of all no mention of pandora's box no no mention of my girl like louise brooke like she's one of my absolute inspirations when it comes to becoming the woman that i am today and just like realizing like i love you know just femininity and, and, and myself and just, I will forever cherish as well reading her book, you know, Lulu in Hollywood. That's like a really great book if you want to know, just be able to experience almost like what it's like to be a star during that time. Definitely a good companion piece to like, for example, Babylon, it's another big budget, like, you know, bomb from a great director, which is a great film, but it's a good book in terms of like being a companion piece to that, I would recommend it. It's just sad that like there's no Louise Brooks. Because it's like, yeah, and also it's just weird because they have pictures of Jimmy Stewart and like, you know, I think Catherine Hepburn and like John Crawford, which is like um, photos in, I think if I were to like guess correctly, it was like in the collection that um, Dietrich owned when she was in Hollywood. So we just like, it's a bit weird there's no mention of Louise Brooks. And that just felt like really, really wrong. Uh, <laughs> 
much. Because Pandora's Box is like maybe my favorite silent film of all time. But then, anyways, and Diary of the Lost Girl as well. Do not forget that Diary of the Lost Girl is incredible. And then the other sad part of it was like, I think the final leg, like around 20% of it left was dedicated to 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, you know, 2010s. So there's like a little bit of Werner Herzog and a little bit of Rainer, Werner Fassbender. But I think maybe it's more due to just like things not surviving past the 70s maybe that maybe in the archives they have more of this stuff from you know the golden age and from like you know 40s 50s more than they did like post that so maybe that's why there isn't so much you know of that stuff but i really like wanted to see more of it and although they have like the boat the Fitzcarraldo boat trunk it's a minis it's it's a miniature of course but like i just like to imagine for some reason like this being a, a weird science fiction movie and they took that entire boat that Bernard herself like got up out of like a mountain of like a side of a mountain in Fitzcarraldo and just trunk it and now it's in the museum that would have been wonderful if that was true and then there was a seat there was like the the, the director seat for rain over and fassbender just right there and it's kind of amazing it's like here is where everybody's favorite German homosexual sat. And it's like, wow, chills, baby, chills. Okay, from over there, uh, what I got, what I ended up getting was this box set of Jim Jarmusch movies. I wanted to get like German movies. I was like, oh my God, I feel kind of bad that I didn't get, you know, a German movie. But like recently I haven't been buying too much DVDs just because of space and my own current, you know, situation financially and stuff. So I haven't been buying too much DVDs. And if I were to, like something like this is very good for me just because like I get 11 movies on a single DVD set, which is cool. And don't worry, I have a region free DVD player. So it's like, it's not going to be too hectic, but, um, yeah, so it's just I, I got this instead and I wanted to like buy, for example, like I wanted to get like the Metropolis one, I like the Pandora's box specifically, but it's not the Criterion. I'm like, I want to own the Criterion of that because that's like, you know, again, one of my very favorites of, of all time, of all films, but like especially like of silent film, it's my favorite of all time. So uh, I'm just going to open this up a little bit, just show it to you. Look at that. Oh, speaking of more burden. There's Johnny Depp there. Mm -hmm. And oh my god, I have never seen this film, but like I've been very obsessed with the smudged lips look, as you can see. So, of course, I have to see this mystery train, and there's Bill Murray. I don't think Bill Murray's ever been in a Tim Bird movie. Maybe he should, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think it's a good idea for him to be in a Tim Bird movie? Who knows? But then the next, the other thing that I got, it's a little treat I got vegan chocolate super delicious so delicious I have to brought it back home just to like look at it and feel like next time I'm gonna go there I'm gonna buy more of these and just hang hang up on them I'm gonna I'm gonna get some more chocolate eat these drink some black coffee and then smoke and finally like the last film that I saw at the at this theater at the Yorker was the apprentice which is about Trump and everything and that was Certainly interesting. It was fun being in that crowd because, like, I think if I would have seen it in Thailand, if they would have shown it, but, like, I don't think a lot of the the jabs and the jokes and everything would get to people. I don't think it, it, it's. I wouldn't say it's like a deep, deep movie. I wouldn't say it like has like a lot of details when it comes to like the politics and other things. But it does require a lot of your knowledge to get, like a lot of your knowledge of Trump to be able to get like some of the ironies and some of like the, the stuff there, which is both like a positive and a negative of the film. Because if you were to think about it, if this movie was about somebody else, it wouldn't quite work as well. So I, it wasn't that great, but I do really like the intention of it and like the, the attempt and just how well it, it works out. And ultimately, I ended up enjoying the film more uh, specifically because of the supporting characters and especially, I think, I don't remember his name, but like the lawyer, how his story documents like a very real and very just often neglected and very ugly perspective of what it was like to be gay, to be a homosexual during the 1980s, and especially like the conservatives who are homosexuals, but they are not going to admit it, and they sabotage our community, and at the same time suffer because of it. 
it's very interesting. I wish that, that the movie was more about him than Trump, but anyways, that's that. And I really enjoy being in that theater. It's just like really, it's a great, great cinema. If you ever go to Berlin and then like come across New Yorker, highly recommend that. I think it's fantastic. And also like one thing I found while I was over there, they have Fritz Cola. Uh, we don't have Fritz Cola here, like it's a like Coca-Cola, but it's just a better version of Coca-Cola. It's like more sweeter, but at the same time, it's less bitter. It's like somehow very, very well done. I don't know how, how else to describe it, except like I was very impressed with it, and I like I got three bottles of Fritz Cola after that. I was like obsessed with it. It was great. So there was that drink, and then there was, um, you know, getting super drunk on like sweet vodka and watching Beetle Juice, Beetle Juice. And finally, like the last thing that I just want to show is that it's it's quite emotional for me but like be, before i realized you know who i am and, and before even like the egg cracked or anything one of like the major major clues that like i i was a woman was the fact that like i wanted dolls so bad when i was a kid like i wanted dolls really 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 bad i still remember as a kid you know, like looking, you know, very like male, like a boy, just like going through like secretly, going through the girls' aisles while nobody's watching at the mall and just looking at the Barbies and like the Monster High girls and just like wanting these so bad. But I knew that if I were to ask my mother to buy these, even if she were to buy it for me and I bring it to school, all the boys would fucking kill me. They would be like, how could you buy like a girl toys or whatever like a doll so like i never never was able to get one of these until now and look at this she's got like cute hat oh my god Dracula, like and she's got a cat as well i love girls with cats like i'm just so happy that like i finally like own a doll and it's just it's incredible i hope this is not like the first and the last i'm gonna have to go and buy more of these for sure because like look at her Fucking iconic, inspirational, oh my god. So I got two toys actually. I got that one and I got, um, I'm not sure if I'm able to show this on YouTube, but like. If you know, you know, you know, you know. <laughs> Other than that, I went and I, I, I ate um, at Five Guys for the first time. Really good burgers, uh, great french fries, you know, just, yeah. Wish I could have stayed there, honestly. Wish I could have stayed there. It was like a really magnificent, you know, four or five days of just being there and just like, yeah. Um, and I just, I really, really cherish it. And just, I'm glad to be able to show all of these with you and just, you know, document this you know just me talking about it and sharing it with you my friends and just i i love it so much i honestly really really do i just like the fact that it's like so it's so wide but it's not so overwhelming it's not like california right where it's like there's a lot going on or that like a lot of things are stretched out no it's like very you could still walk from one place to the other without it being almost like hiking you know it, it's still really really accessible you know for somebody like me just like going there and just i i really fucking love it honestly and just i i'm trying to remember what i did the last day specifically but i just know like i didn't do too much besides from like just going you know to the airport crying a lot and oh i passed the immigration at the immigration it was fucking hilarious i'm just gonna post the video that i post on my stories over here i think she explains it better than anybody else okay very quickly i'm gonna just document this quick little wholesome moment I had at the immigration um, pass where like this lady, an, an officer lady, oh my god she was so hot, she was like looking at my passport and then she did like a double take and she was like, are you becoming a woman now? And I'm like, oh yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm transgender, yeah, and she was like, wow, you look really different, I'm like, yeah, I definitely look different, I should change that photo, right, because like I look so, so different, she was like, yeah, and I'm like, but for the better, right, and she's like, oh, absolutely. It's just so wholesome, and I love and I love her. F it, it's such an iconic line. You're becoming a woman now. I should definitely get that like uh, printed on a T-shirt. You're becoming a woman now. <laughs> but after that, I went on the plane, secretly cried inside, like wishing I would have just stayed. You know, fuck all of the immigration, fuck all of them, and just stayed. But 
well, hopefully one day. Hopefully one day I'll be I'll be back. And it was also very funny because when I was going over there, I rewatched Priscilla on the plane, which is very funny if you were to realize that you know Priscilla in Germany was where she met Elvis. So I watched that on the plane while I was going there, and then. Guess what? Last thing I watched on the plane while I was coming back home, Priscilla. Perfect. A lot of tears. A lot of fucking tears. And with that in mind, I think I am going to tr give this uh, a go. Just the field orange, which on which is you know of course way more stronger than just the field you know blue. But I think both of these are like really good. Perfect. Absolutely just just like. <sighs> Here we go. It's very dark right now, so perfect timing. Now that is way stronger. Way, way stronger. Makes me want to cry, actually. I'm not sure if it's this or just memories of Germany, but other than that, girls, Germany is the best, honestly. Berlin gotta go there. I think this is like the only place where when I look at those shirts that says like I love Berlin, it actually feels like genuine. It actually feels like yeah I would I would wear that shirt dude. I would fucking wear that shirt. Oh. oh and I went to the zoo. The zoo was very nice, the animals of course. It just I like how it's like half zoo and half park. Which is very cool. Oh wow, I got some cigarettes on my lips. <sighs> oh my god, look at that, look at the lip stain that I got. the sunset it's like it's so beautiful and this buzz is so strong i'm telling you this buzz this buzz is giving that one a run for its money but it's quite strong you could almost pass out from it jesus and match this with black coffee i mean perfect absolutely fucking perfect year to be me going to Germany but it's easily one of the best parts of this year by far I really really loved it <sighs> let me increase the lights a little just in case you can't see me even though I think you're probably asleep at this point which is good good for you get some good sleep and just remember kids you know don't smoke um, but if you do, brush your teeth a lot and don't throw these around. It's not good. I do, I do admit I kind of did throw these around a bit while I was over there. But a lot of people were doing it as well. And yet the street was so clean. Quite clean. Like, yeah, there were like, you know, dead bodies and cigarettes there. But still, it was very nice. It was very aesthetic. of your day um, whenever you're watching this and just yeah take care of yourself bye